Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I am Michael Castor. Um, I'm a product manager here at Yuskawa Modem Man, and I am here at an undisclosed location at 100 uh, Automation Way in Miamisburg, Ohio, with the brand new HC20XP. So we're very excited about this robot. Uh, this is the first IP67 rated cobot that we know of. Um, it has 1.7 meters of reach, so out and up. So it enables us to reach two full pallets using one riser. So from one location, you, we have full reach of two full pallets. So very exciting. Um, so for simple palletizing applications, this is a really good choice. Uh, IP67 rated, like I mentioned. So you can do uh, spray down or wipe down. Uh, so if the robot gets dirty, you can literally hose it down. Also for machine tending applications, this is gonna be very well suited for it uh, because coolant really won't have any effect on it. Um, it also has 0.05 millimeters of repeatability. So if you program a point, have it go back to that point, it'll get there within 0.05 millimeters. So a very accurate robot. Uh, it also has food grade grease throughout. So um, in areas where incidental ingestion may occur, this is a very good solution for it. So for consumer packaged goods, also for uh, packaged foods, uh, very good for that too. Uh, additionally, as far as uh, op or, um, features go, we have a piece of shielded CAT6 cable that runs from the base of the arm clear out here to the flange. So that means you can get Ethernet IP clear to your tool. So for more, it gives you more options for uh, more advanced tools. Very uh, excited about that. And it's also pre-wired for a servo gripper, which means you have plenty of conductors coming up through the arm, as well as beefy power conductors. So you can power those tools with an integrated compressor just like this on robot VG10 we have mounted to it right now. Uh, this gripper is not active currently, uh, it's just there for show, but we could hook it up and just use the onboard conductors so you don't have to run anything external. Um, and with a gripper like this, you don't have to use any external airlines either. So a very good compact package all through the arm, so it's very clean. Uh, as far as safety goes, just like the HC10, we have dual torque sensors in every axis. And these are constantly being monitored for any collisions. So in the event of a collision, the robot will shut down and we'll show that in a bit. Um, this little amber light will come on on the side, pausing the robot, making sure everything's all clear. You hit that button and then the robot goes back to work as usual. Uh, so as far as safety is concerned as well, it is TEV certified to 13849-1. Uh, um, it's also PFL certified, so ISO, uh, 10218-1, and it's compliant with uh, ISO TS-15066. So this, uh, the HC20 is available on both our YRC-1000 and YRC-1000 microcontrollers. The ones we have in stock currently are on the YRC-1000 micro, but we have more coming in that are for the YRC-1000. So when you need all those extra um, IO connections, and for your more advanced uh, uses, the YRC-1000 would be a good choice. For, uh, for most things, though, you can use a YRC-1000 micro and be totally fine. Um, so like our HC-10, we have these integrated teach buttons on the side here. And these allow you to move the robot, and I'll show you that now. So I'll go ahead and move it, maybe. Make sure it's in the right mode here. And turn the speed up. Ah, oh, my servos were off. That's the problem. Okay. So you can go ahead and move it around. You can see very little effort required to do that. We can do up, down, left, right. We can rotate the tool. See, so for quick and easy jobs, you can just use the hand guiding. We also have the teach button on the side here. So while we move it, we can use this teach button and teach the locations in space to be played back later. So you can do this all without touching the pendant. Um, the pendant's all the way over there. So I can actually program it from here just by hitting this button. Uh, we also have a tool button on the side here, and this will toggle our tool on and off. So a short press will toggle the tool on, and another short press will toggle it off. And then a long press will put that, put that command into the program that I'm writing so you can do everything right from here. So uh, for quick and easy jobs, it's a very good solution. All right, so as for hand guiding, works very well on this robot. It's uh, 
since it's a large robot, it takes a little bit of force, but it's really not too bad. You can see that I'm doing everything with one hand, which is kind of hard to do with a microphone. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to show you uh, the collaborative mode. So you can see this light is on the top here, and that indicates that we are in collaborative mode. So this is safe right now. And we do have a safety scanner hooked up to it. So this is a key and sensor. And we have a safety zone set up. So if I step out of it, you'll see that light goes off. The robot's now in industrial mode. And I'll demonstrate this in a job shortly. And when I move back in, the robot goes back into the safe collaborative mode. So let me go ahead and put a job on here. And I uh, created this earlier. Hopefully it's not too bad. So we're not actually going to pick the box, but we'll just act like it. I'm going to go ahead and put it into play mode here. First, I'll forward it to the start position. All right, so we'll go into automatic mode, turn our servos back on. And go ahead and play that. <clears throat> yes, the robot is going slower <clears throat> because I am uh, in collaborative mode right now. We'll move our box over just slightly. So I can interact with the robot right now. It's also very smooth, so this is a gloss finish. And there's also no pinch points on this, just like our HC10. So it was designed um, for you to, to to be used you know, in close proximity to people. So here, uh, it's acting like it's picking the box, but let's say I tilt this up on edge here. So it's not gonna expect that. So we'll see what happens when it comes back. All right, so you probably can't see it from the camera angle, but there's an amber light on the top and this uh, tells us that it did encounter an obstacle or a force that it didn't expect. So it's just, it stopped and it also pulled back. So you can tell it was right down on top of the box. And if you watched closely, you would see it lift up about an inch. So this allows you to remove the object, get it out of the way, or if that was your hand or something, you could then pull your hand away so it can't clamp you. So once everything is okay, we can go ahead and hit this button and it will resume operation right where it left off. Let's go ahead and put that back. And like I said, we do have this safety scanner hooked up. So in collaborative mode, you're speed limited. So you can only go about 250 millimeters a second max. Uh, it might have to be slower depending on your risk assessment and what it's actually doing, which is great because the robot's still operating with you there. But as far as productivity goes, uh, it's going very slow. So if you are trying to meet a rate or you need to uh, keep up with an assembly line or something, yeah, this is not going to be ideal for all day operation. So what we can do is I can move this box out of the way too. We'll get everything out of the way here and it will go ahead and go into industrial mode. If I get the box all the way out. There we go. So right now we're operating at, uh, I don't think it's quite full speed because we don't have the robot bolted down, but it is going at a much faster rate, about three or four times faster than it was before. So as far as meeting your rate requirements, uh, this is very good for that. And while I step in, that light comes back on. We are now in collaborative mode again, so I can interact with the robot, be beside it. If it impacts me, the robot stops, hit the button, and starts out again. So if you have any questions, we're going to hold those to the end of the show. I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning. But uh, since I'm doing this live, it's kind of hard for me to hear and give this. So just hold those to the end and we'll get to them. All right. So now I have another job that we can show just to show you the extents to the robot. Let me go ahead and switch it over.
can get out of the way here. It'll go a little faster. All right. So I have it doing a little dance here just to give you an idea of the range of this robot. This is not a small robot. It's uh, pretty big. So it enables you to do a lot of jobs that previously you could only do with an industrial robot. So again, since we do have this laser scanner hooked up, I can approach it, it slows down, goes back into collaborative mode. So I can again interact with it. If it runs into me, it'll stop. I hit the button, clear it. Then when I back back out, it'll speed back up. All right, so that's uh, kind of all the examples that I have for you right now. Um, you'll notice that I am using the standard pendant. So the robot right now is available only with the standard pendant, but towards the end of the summer, this will be released on our smart pendant, which has smart frame. Um, and for new users, it's a really good solution. But for right now, we have it on the standard pendant, works great on it. Um, so now we do have some time for questions.